It is known that the older a vampire, the more powerful it is. In a few centuries, a vampire is nearly unstoppable. You just met a Stone Age vampire. Callum stood before the doors to the Inner Sanctum, the dwelling place of the ancient phage, the ruler of all vampires. If his heart still beat, it would have been pounding. Any vampire who approached even this far was subject to summary destruction, save only the six members of the Inner Council, who alone were permitted to attend the eldest vampire, or even to bear witness to its divine visage. It had taken Lord Callum over 300 years of plotting and scheming, but he had finally been elevated to the inner council of the court of the ancient phage. This gave him a great deal of power, even by the reckoning of his fellow elder vampires. That was why he had needed to destroy so many of his own kind in his struggle to attain this position. Most of them would have been perplexed to learn that power was not what he sought in his pursuit of a council seat. Craving power was as natural to vampire kind as thirsting for blood. While Callum's hunger for the latter was as ravenous as any of his kind, his thirst for the former was muted at best. Power, to Callum, was a means to an end, by which he hoped to acquire something that he craved far more. Knowledge. The ancient phage was the eldest of all vampires, and it stood to reason that it could answer questions that no one else could, questions that had been Callum's obsession since he was reborn as a creature of the night. As Callum stood contemplating the portal that would lead him, him to his deepest desire, he heard Lord Piotr sigh impatiently beside him. It was an especially dramatic affectation for a being who hadn't needed to breathe in centuries. Are you going to open the doors, or just stand there gawking, Lord Callum? Callum turned to his fellow counselor, cocking an eyebrow. We just go in, Lord Piotr. We are counselors, Piotr replied with a dismissive wave. We are permitted. He narrowed his eyes. Callum was always on guard for treachery, even now. Was Piotr trying to trick him into offending the ancient phage? A vampire's power grew with age, and the ancient phage was many thousands of years older than any other. Though Callum had destroyed a few vampires with more raw power than himself, by skill and cunning, he knew the ancient phage could rend him limb from limb in a heartbeat. Why don't you do the honors this time, Lord Piotr? Callum suggested shrewdly. You are the senior counselor here, and you were kind enough to take time out of your busy schedule to bring me to my first audience with our liege. Piotr rolled his eyes. Callum. You really must try to discard that tedious paranoia of yours. Politics and intrigue are preoccupations for our inferiors. You are beyond such things now. Piotr placed his hands on the massive doors and pushed them open unceremoniously before casually striding inside. Callum followed, tensely, still wary of a trap. The chamber of the ancient phage was enormous but its grandeur was limited to its size alone. It was mostly empty, except for an omnipresent layer of refuse and the husks of prey. Callum was surprised by this, as most of the elder vampires he'd known favored luxurious surroundings. Still, some other vampires fancied themselves forces of nature, predation incarnate, and they had lairs meant to evoke a feeling of primal brutality. He'd always found that to be mere artifice in most cases, the dwelling of the ancient phage seemed more genuine somehow. Once they were a good way into the distance, Piotr stopped, looking around with a thoughtful frown. Where is the ancient one? Callum asked. Around here somewhere, Piotr replied. His veil can make him invisible even to the likes of us, you know. Incredible, Callum murmured, awed. Normally, even the weakest whelp could see through a veil, no matter how much stronger the veiled vampire was. They were meant to deceive prey, not other vampires. This'll bring him out, Piotr said. He produced a leather wineskin from his coat and tossed it onto the floor. What is... Callum began, then trailed off as a small, hunched-over shape blurred into view before them and snatched up the wineskin. The brutish-looking little man made an excited hooting sound before lifting the wineskin to his wide mouth and sinking his crooked yellowed fangs into it. Behold the ancient phage, god of the night, lord of blood, and ruler of all vampire kind, Piotr said dryly. Then he smirked. 
It's well known that His Majesty acts exclusively through his counselors. I trust you now understand the real reason he does not deign to trouble himself with mundane decisions. Callum gaped at the ungainly creature sucking noisily on the wineskin of blood. Wah! What? We live forever beyond death, Lord Callum, Piotr said patiently. But we do not grow beyond death. That is why we never turn children. But... But the ancient phage is powerful beyond measure, Callum protested. Piotr nodded. He is. Just try taking that wineskin away from him and see what happens. But as with any of us, the mental capacity he had when he was turned did not increase after his death and rebirth. The senior counselor tapped his temple. He may be the eldest and most experienced of us, but his mind lacks the tools to make use of that boundless experience in the abstract. In his day, learning the habit of pondering and musing upon the lessons of life was far less pressing than learning how to throw a spear or skin a mammoth, and mortal lives were even shorter than they are now. Lord Pyotr's lip curled in distaste as he regarded the phage's ravenous, untidy repast. Though, to be honest, I suspect he was fairly dim, even by the measure of his own era. Callum watched the primitive little loincloth-clad vampire gnaw contentedly on the wineskin, seemingly oblivious to his subject's discussion of him. Some mortals thought their god was dead. Callum had been one of them before he was turned a rarity in those days. He had developed a sophisticated philosophical framework to cope with the existential dread that followed from that conclusion, one that would later be echoed by mortal luminaries like Nietzsche. Of course, being burned by holy water and repelled by crosses had disabused him of that youthful notion. The mortal god was clearly still alive. So too was Callum's god. But despite his philosophical acumen, he had no idea how to cope with irrefutable evidence that his god was both alive and an idiot.